Greetings and wishes to everyone. I am Maria Lavandot and I have had the privilege to be a part of this school and spend the best years of my life, my childhood, my teen and my adolescent years in this prestigious school, St. Bridget's Convent, Colombo. And I also declare this school as the leading Catholic school in this island nation, Sri Lanka. St. Bridget's Convent was founded on the 1st of February in 1902 by the Sisters of the Good Shepherd Congregation. Against this backdrop, we have come together to share how we have been influenced by the life, spirituality and mission of someone very important, not only to St. Bridget's Convent, but also to the worldwide fraternity of the Good Shepherd Sisters. She is none other than Rose Virginie Pelletier, who was later named as Sister Mary Euphrasia. She also founded the Congregation of the Good Shepherd Sisters, to which St. Bridget Convent belongs, thereby making us the daughters of St. Mary Euphrasia. Rose Virginie Pelletier was born 225 years ago on the 31st of July 1796 in Noirmoutier, an island of France. She grew up to be a very caring and generous person due to the example of her parents. During her teen years, she attended a boarding school in France and she was attracted to the work of the Sisters of Charity as they were associated with doing work with women and children in need. At the age of 18, Rose Virginie Pelletier joined the Sisters of Charity and she was given the name Sister Mary Euphrasia. Joining me today are three other fellow Bridgetines, Amani Yusuf, Sansala Pereira and Manasa Manivannan. So we belong to different faiths and ethnicities and we have all completed our education in this illustrious school, St. Bridget's Convent, Colombo. And I would say that we received, what we received was a holistic and integrated education which was combined in academics, spirituality, aesthetics, sports and extracurricular activities which sharpened our skills and talents and provided us the platform and forum to excel in them as well. To begin sharing our experiences we have Amani. Hello Amani, thank you for being a part of this event today and as a young past Bridgetine, shall we take a moment to reminisce the journey of your student days at St. Bridget's Convent and the spiritual and moral values in life in which you are enriched and, and what it has made you who you are today. Hi Mariela. So firstly, I'd like to thank everyone involved for choosing me to, this is a great opportunity so for choosing me to be one of the speakers today. So um, to talk a bit about myself, so I'm Amani Yusuf and I've been a Bridgetine since I was two and a half, right? So I've um, had my primary and secondary education as well as my kindergarten, preschool education from this hallowed institute. So um, becoming a Bridgetine was by far one of the best decisions my parents had taken for me. And I wouldn't say that it was um, something that happened by chance since I'm a third generation Bridgetine my mom as well as my grandma have been brought up um, across this um, teachings so um, to tell you about what I'm doing at present right um, I'm taking up a computer science degree at Informatics Institute of Technology that's affiliated with the University of Westminster so I've uh, just completed my first year and I'm awaiting to start my second year, hopefully in September. So um, to tell about school life, well, obviously it's, uh, it's one of a kind, right? Um, even though I finished my A-levels back in 2019, I was still called and I had worked with um, the work closely last year as well in 2020 in various clubs and activities, sports, so on. So um, going back to the school days, um, when I started, I could call myself a pretty shy, backward, young kid. 
all changed once I joined the Interact Club and the Drama Society back um, when I came to upper school. Um, ever since, I have worked closely not only with Muslims but with Christians, Buddhists and Hindu students. And I think that's the beauty of being a Bridgetine. Because no matter what you do, I mean, yes, the, I could have gone to, there's so many innumerable Muslim schools across the country. My parents could have selected one of those schools and sent me, right? But I think they chose specifically St. Bridget's Convent because of the name it has held throughout the past, right? The, the individuals, the personalities St. Bridget's Convent has pushed out have gone a long way. So um, undoubtedly my parents wanted the best for me, the best education, the best discipline for me to respect my elders, so on. And as a past Bridgetine, I can tell that my parents did make the best decision for me because right now, when I'm in the outside world, when I'm working with society, I can see being a Bridgetine, there is quite a huge difference and why Bridgetines stand out from the rest. I mean, I've heard stories, I've seen stories, I've seen things happen. But right now, I understand why St. Bridget stands out, why the discipline, the respect, why the teachings that are given from this school it stands out. And that's because everyone knows the culture of St. Bridget's, the moral and spiritual values it holds. To tell you a story about spiritual values, right? So um, in grade nine, the Christians receive confirmation, right? So I'm a Muslim and um, I was in the technical group. I was a president. So when I was in grade nine, when they were receiving confirmation, I was just a member. But that day, sister and uh, a few seniors told me, Amani, could you go and help out with confirmation? It was a weekend, it was a Saturday. And I could have just turned down and said, no, you know what, it's a weekend, right? I want to sleep, I have other commitments. But I took up that challenge. I came to school early at around seven and I set the auditorium up and I stood there up in the light room and I watched my batchmates, my friends receiving confirmation. And to me, I felt a sense of pride within. So regardless of what religion, what culture, what creed you belong to, when you come to St. Bridget's, you are thought to be human. You are thought to respect, you are thought disciplinary manners, you know, so on. And um, another example I'd like to give. So we have our holy month of Ramadan where you fast for 30 days. And obviously we come to school. So during the interval, my friends, they would not eat during the interval. They would not eat in front of me just so that they could hang around with me in the interval. They could make me feel comfortable. So again, I think that's something unique you see in Bridgetines, right? Because yes, you can go to Muslim ladies, you will see everyone fasting. So no one's going to eat, right? So that, um, that's nothing quite outstanding there because everyone is fasting. But here, my friends made a sacrifice with me. They might not go to the canteen, they might, you know, just stay with me throughout. So those are the differences that you can see in a school like St. Bridget's. Um, and even during holy masses, I most of the time was not with the Muslims because I was told to set up the mics and so on. Again, I would sit in the assembly hall and I would listen to the preachings given by the priest, um, the sermons, and I could say that they relate a lot to my religion. But uh, again, I have learned a lot by sitting in the corner of the assembly hall and listening. So again, if I had gone to an all Muslim or one faith based school, I would have missed out a lot. So again, um, all my friends, right, all my best friends, they're of different faiths. I have Christians, Hindus and Buddhists. So Amani, as a young adult who is out in the contemporary world, how do you portray the human values in life and the good discipline that you inherited from St. Bridget's, not forgetting the good values instilled by the Sisters of the Good Shepherd, uh, following the teachings of St. Mary Euphrasia, 
how do you put all of this into practice through your profession as a web developer and in the field of IT and technology? So being a Bridgetian by nature, we have a very close contact with St. Mary Euphrasia, with the teachings of Jesus Christ, so on. Um, St. Mary Euphrasia, she has been a young and inspiring girl since she was um, little, right? at a very young age, since she was a teenager. Uh, so just like that, the nuns in our school have always pushed us to be the best version of ourselves, the nuns as well as the teachers. They have always pushed us to follow the teachings of St. Mary Euphrasia, of Mother Mary, so on to follow that path of life because I believe even though I am a Muslim, those teachings are not going to ruin you but they are always going to make you a better person, right? they are going to make you a better individual. So this school has, as a young girl, when we had a set of rules and regulations to follow, even I felt it as a headache, you know, like why do we have so much rules, why this, why that, so many restrictions. But after I stepped out into the competitive society, I realized no wonder sister told us this, the teachers told us not to do this and had that set of rules and regulations. And even though I complained as a little girl, right now I'm happy and quite uh, satisfied that we were brought up in such a strict environment. Right now, I wouldn't say, looking at the current society, I wouldn't say those were strict rules. I'd say those were the basic rules, the basic rules that others have missed out on. So the discipline we have achieved, we have gained from St. Bridget's, it's not just for the 13 years you're in school, but definitely for a lifetime. Even when I became, when I received such positions, I made it a point that I had those, um, those values that were instilled in me as a 14 year old passed down. Because right now, the current society honestly is deteriorating, right? The values, they're all basically um, gone astray. So um, I think coming to a school like St. Bridget's, you need to pass those values down to your juniors because the, the, uh, the upbringing I had was, has supported me till date in my work field, in my education, outside school, in, in society basically. It has helped me be the best version of myself and I think we as past pupils, as past Bridgetines, need to move that forward, move that legacy forward because right now as you said, I do a degree in IT. If you see social media, if you see how cyberbullying, everything takes place, it's honestly quite sad. It's, it's scary to post a picture of you on social media because there are so many ways it could be used. Someone could just take a screenshot and edit it and you wouldn't even know. Memes could be made out of it, right? So as much as social media and IT has it's um, has its advantages, it does has a lot of disadvantages coming through. So I believe um, I'm focusing on web development and app development, right? So in the coming future, I want to, right? I want to make it a better place. I want to make IT a safer place, even though, because we can't stop IT. It's, it's unlike any other field. It's, it's just rapidly go growing every day. Every day you see a new technology, a new feature, a new mobile phone, something keeps releasing, right? So IT is something that you can't stop in the near future. It's going to go on. And even at least you can't change the mentality of a grown man, but you can instill values of a little girl or a little boy. You can teach them the right from wrong. So I believe we as past Bridgetines, it is our duty and our responsibility to instill such values, such discipline, which we have received from this school into their minds. Because if you see the ones making memes, ones uh, you know, using social media, IT in the wrong aspect, are 
people from our generation, our people from, you know, who our colleagues, so on. So sometimes it might, you might find it hard to change their mentality. But like we always say, change begins from within, right? So if you change, you can change everyone else. I think I read this quote somewhere that said, uh, you can't change the world, but you can change the world. Because you, I can't tell you to change. I can't tell everyone else to change if I'm not going to change. So I think change begins from within. So if I, or if we as the young Bridgetines, young past Bridgetines, if we can follow the teachings of St. Mary Euphrasia, of her path, because her path has not gone wrong, right? We have, um, we have so much discipline, so much respect for our elders because we were brought up in such teachings. So following such a path would not make, uh, we would not uh, make a mistake in life. So just like that, if we can um, instill, like I said before, instill these teachings, empower the younger generation, I'm sure we could live a better life, live in a better world in the future to come. Thank you, Armani, for sharing your wonderful experience with us. Now we have Sansala Pereira joining us today and making this event memorable. So, Sansala, how would you share your experience and your journey at St. Bridget's Convent? First of all, thank you for having me here today. Uh, very blessed and thankful. So, to start off with myself, uh, I, my name is Sansala Pereira and I've been a past Bridgetine from year 2007 since year 1 up until year 2019, year 13. So during that years at school, uh, the main reason why I joined this school was because of the values it inherited, being inherited from uh, the Good Shepherd Sisters. Uh, very blessed and thankful and I have a great sports life at school as well and um, very blessed. So you excelled in the field of sports and you didn't only represent your school but you also represented your country in many international games. So what would you like to share with our audience today about the positive impact of St. Bridget's and the impact that it had on you? And not forgetting that you are also a second generation Bridgetine and also you come from a very strong Buddhist family background. So keeping that in mind, how would you like to tell our audience on the impact that St. Mary Euphrasia and her values and teachings, what was the impact that it had on you? Uh, first of all, coming from a strong Buddhist background, yes, but my parents mainly didn't want to focus on education or extracurricular activities. They mainly focused on uh, personality, as who I become at, after my school life, how I face the real world more than my qualifications. So that's when they believed very well that St. Bridget's Convent, especially, having a good background from the from St. Mary Euphrasia, her teachings to the Good Shepherd Sisters and the Good Shepherd Sisters sharing those values. The, um, uh, the greatest values I've inherited from my school, from the teachings, are honesty, being respecting to others and, spe and especially um, caring for other people, right? And also being honest and having great discipline. So. When it comes to discipline also, being a sportswoman, right? Discipline is probably the biggest factor, being a sportswoman, because when it comes to a sport, it's mainly physical, more than a mental uh, journey, right? So you need to practice, practice, and that's how it makes you perfect. So having great discipline, not just by doing things, but also simple things, you know, uh, the way you do things also gives you a quality as a sportswoman you know, not just going and doing what you want to do, right? So my sports career in school started from a young age. I started from swimming and I've been a swimmer since the, from grade one. And uh, then I moved on to artistic swimming, back then known as synchronized swimming. Uh, it's a very beautiful sport and I love that sport up until now. I continue that sport, very passionate about it. 
so that sport is also an emerging sport in Sri Lanka. So, and as being a sportswoman, having the quality of discipline and also through the teachings of St. Mary Euphrasia, she, if you take her young life as a girl, uh, she had a lot of uh, negative impacts around her, right? And through all that negativity around her, she had that strong grit, motivation, and especially she had perseverance. Uh, so if you take St. Mary Euphrasia's youth, and especially coming from her parents' background, he was a doctor, right? And back then when it was the French Revolution, he cured patients, not just his um, good friends, but also his allies. And he was very much supportive and she took that into her life as an example and she did so much going off her limits caring for people and up until now until this generation right people have learned her teachings especially the good shepherd sisters and those teachings have been taught to us from school which we are so blessed because we've come out as strong people right confident with ourselves because no matter what external background qualification you have doesn't matter, right? It's who you are inside. If you're confident as a human, yeah, you can do anything probably. So, and especially her faith with God was the main reason she had motivation to do everything. I believe she said once, uh, all of this was possible because it's God's work. So if it's God's work, she, uh, she, God will always support her to do the best and right thing. So just like that, as a non-Catholic, we can uh, what we can take from it is, though we are from a different background or different religion or ethnic, doesn't matter. Whatever you believe in it, believe in it properly so that you can do what you want to do correctly. So taking that advice and her perseverance, her discipline, uh, all of those teachings have been carried down to all the Good Shepherd sisters and they've been taught us uh, at school and especially if you take discipline uh, when we have swimming meets at school or if we go for meets outside uh, national meets in, in the country uh, we have to wear a certain outfit given by the school uh, and we have to wear specific specifically it's noted what we need to wear so those are simple things where discipline starts where you train your mind to do things the right way. It's not easy, but because of that, we've, been, uh, it's, we've come out as great people. And for me to compete nationally, uh, showing myself as a proud Sri Lankan with great discipline and good, good values is being obeyed by everyone because of the teachings I've got from my school. And I'm very thankful. So, having been nurtured in the teachings and values of St. Euphrasia, how would you in turn make an impact with the people you encounter with? How would you want to make a difference in your workplace or in your studies? How would you want to make a change? So, presently, I am uh, pursuing my bachelor's in international business uh, in Sri Lanka. So, with that, and also I'm still continuing my sports, so with the balance of that, I meet different people, right? Now I'm in a new world, no school friends, different community, uh, more towards the outside world, competitive world. So uh, I, since I meet different people and since I don't have a financial status yet, uh, the simplest thing I can do to help people is by helping them emotionally supporting them when they have small problems, right? Life problems or anything, even in studies. Uh, things start from small things, you know, helping people. And those values are also especially being taught from school, right? Uh, especially when we have floods in Sri Lanka, or when, uh, when some disaster happens, our school is being taught, like every class has been given a priority to uh, keep out some dry rations and some essentials for the people in need and those simple values and disciplines we've been taught uh, Though we don't realize it's it's been practicing to us and we realize that oh my god, you know, we need to help people 
we need we need to give this you know we can't be selfish so things like that start from there and i'm so blessed those are again good values that my school has taught me from the good shepherd sisters through saint uh, mary euphrasia's teachings and um so i after i finish my uh, education i hope to be a woman entrepreneur uh and as a business woman i would hope to obviously help the people in need very much in every way possible right to go off my limits just like saint mary euphrasia did how hard she worked and how much she didn't care for herself she went all out for everyone else around her and how much she's done up till now for the entire world i mean was the good shepherd teachings are not just in sri lanka it's all around the world and uh, as humans with technology we are being evolved to be completely different people no values no personality right so since i come from a background of good shepherd sisters i know these values right i've been taught them very strictly and i'm i've been learned to obey them right and it's become a practice in my life and that has made me a better person and i'm a stronger person now and thankfully i'm very <laughs> blessed to be a bridgetian because of these teachings and values because these values i will take on until my death <laughs> and uh, just like no matter how much we earn what qualification we have uh, who we are in the society doesn't matter it's what you do because that's what you take with you so uh those strong values i will always cherish in myself and i'm very thankful to saint mary euphrasia's values that she had showered on all the good shepherd sisters and on all the bridgetians uh very thankful and blessed thank you sansila for those very enriching words and thoughts and i wish you all the very best in everything you do and now we move on to manasa manivannan Thank you for being a part of our story as we celebrate our togetherness and unity in diversity. So you are currently a student of medicine. So what are your nostalgic recollections of your student life at St Bridget's Convent and the positive influence it had with the education you received in this great school and institution? and talking about the good shepherd sisters as well and the spiritual guidance of saint mary euphrasia hi mariela i'm really privileged to talk uh, in on this special occasion and i'm here manasa manivannan 22 years uh, currently doing my medicine in malaka manipal medical college india uh, i started my school career in 2005 and passed out in 2018 um not much into sports but i did bharatanatyam in lot of functions thinking of that i get the memories that flourishing memories and i want to share some with you uh the main thing that my parents among so many schools in sri lanka they wanted me to put into a convent not only that i would acquire knowledge but more than that the discipline and culture as a female we need that unique feminine qualities so the sisters if we are with the sisters they nurture us to be a perfect woman in future so that's a great thing about our school and the impressive thing is the prayer routine we have we have three uh, the routine is three prayers we do per day morning then the angelus and before leaving school so this practice of the catholics i was really impressed that still i do that before starting my work or my uh, study thing anything so that's really a great thing about catholics and sisters which they have because saint mary of fresia was called praying mother she has given so much importance to prayers because god is the one who helps us to live each and every moment happily and successfully so the gratitude they show is a great thing and the other important thing is there's no discrimination even during masses we have our religious activities 
where we are tend to uh, show our like um, spread our religious values beliefs and sing the songs of our religion so i really love that about our school and the other thing is the minor staffs they are also fellow human beings most of the people they think they are just people who work they clean the toilets why should we respect them but it's not like that so the our school bridgetines they tend to respect those people also and when we see normally you are a bridgetine you know we have the assembly morning gatherings there are a principal she says the moral stories irrespective of religion all children tend to learn from it it guides us to live a perfect life and school time is the best main best period of our lifetime because from childhood to teenage we are spending our life there so it has the the foundation is vital for a personality building and to mold ourselves to be a dutiful citizen so these are just some of the many of the positive influences i have had which i instilled within me so what is your vision for the future because you are going to, you are studying to become a gynecologist so how do you intend in the course of time to significantly impact the lives through the medical profession following the example and the teachings of saint euphrasia which were instilled in you at saint bridget's convent as all know Uh, Saint Mary of Fresia is coming from a, a medical background. Her father was a doctor, and even mother served for poor people. In a young age, she was facing the French Revolution, so they were captives. But although they were, her father not only served those poor people but also the captors, the enemies. So she has seen such quality of her parents and was brought up. she has seen faith in action and then at the age of 18 she has joined a boarding school where she saw sisters she was fascinated by them serving destitute women and girls and making them go in a right path so as a woman she loved serving women abandoned people abandoned women and making them go in the correct path so inspired by that I want to become a gynecologist serving women because it's not about money you know when you become a doctor you earn a lot but more than money it's a selfless service you know it's a noble profession so serving women like the people who are not affordable also they they should they should they should love to come to us and ask our advice you know there are many doctors in sri lanka why do people choose a particular person there are a reason for that no the reason is some doctors they may be academically well but when they see a patient coming to them then it's of they diagnose what's the disease and they prescribe and they give out they just think about that medical prescription only physically curing them that's not important they should mentally also should be cured so for that the doctor should talk with them communicate patience is really important many doctors lack patience and they should like treat them mentally by talking with them and now in university uh like minor staffs there are like during practicals uh for practicals the subject would be we use minor staffs as them so in school times how we treated them that in that is impact in this during this period because we tend to treat them also well as fellow human being and school times irrespective whether they are teaching us or not we greet the teachers who passes by and the lecturers also in university i tend spontaneously it comes ah hello miss good morning ma'am like that so my fellow colleagues they ask why do you just greet the people voluntarily you don't even know them i would say yeah i don't know them but you know they are elder to us and they are in this teaching profession so should respect them so and these such qualities are uh, just grounded within me because of these sisters who uh, follow the legacy of saint euphrasia 
another thing although i am a hindu my religious faith also has enhanced seeing the uh, practice of catholic people how they are respecting others and how they believe their religion how they uh, tend to face the future and all so uh, i would like to say it's not a privilege more than that it's a blessing that i'm a bridgetine i've completed my schooling but still i want to uh, spread the values the spiritual and moral values i have got from this school to the future generation in this present world how much problems women are facing traumatized life harassment abuse so i want to take them uh, into a correct path to make them lead a correct path you know now ladies to live their basic life they live immoral lifestyle so those people uh, i want to help them mentally not only as a doctor not only physically but also mentally so as a gynecologist and i am also a hindu i was inspired by st mary euphrasia's mission and i want to carry out it throughout my life and be an example to the future generation too thank you manas and it was wonderful to have this conversation with you and to know about your vision for the future and i'm sure that mother euphrasia is looking down with pride and to know that her daughters of this generation are carrying her flame to the next generation so i wish you all the very best and good luck having listened to all the positive and amazing experiences of my fellow bridgetians who belong to buddhist islamic and hindu faiths i consider it a grace and a blessing of god to have been nurtured and to have completed my education all the way from grade 1 up until my advanced level examination at st bridget's convent for me being a catholic life at st bridget's convent has strengthened my relationship with god and it has brought me much closer to god and i have been groomed to fulfill the work of god and what he wants me to do in my life i am grateful to have received the catholic formation especially when it came to receiving the first holy communion corpus christi confirmation uh, and also during the devotion to mother mary during the month of may in a catholic atmosphere these religious activities provided me the platform where my god given leadership skills as the core leader were manifested and i was able to set an example to 180 students where where we proclaimed the word of god through music and song while also maintaining simplicity humility and being gracious while being disciplined as i was a student of the advanced level art stream i was fascinated by the field of media and broadcasting which eventually led me to where i am right now as a radio presenter so even as mother euphrasia was a leader she led people to god media and technology is something that we all have at our fingertips and it it can be used negatively or positively but through the teachings of mother euphrasia and the values that have been instilled in me through the sisters and through the school st bridgets i want to use these values positively for the greater use of mankind where i could teach people or where you could show people the difference between right and wrong in life using media effectively music media and broadcasting has the power to influence the minds of millions within minutes or even seconds at the press of a button back in the day of rose virginy there was no technology but over generations her legacy has been passed down in today's modern world we have technology which is freely available at our fingertips and through my profession as a radio presenter i want to disseminate the values and teachings of st mary euphrasia where this world is full of things which are mostly wrong and through this i want to make sure that i can bring something to the people and bring a change so 
these values and teachings which are over 200 years old, which have been coming down from generation to generation. As a Bridgetine and as a daughter of St. Mary Euphrasia, it is my duty and I will ensure to continue to influence the minds of the people in the right way with the right teachings and the right values. St. Bridget's Convent has been a great school to me and as I have started a new chapter in my life, I am equipped with the values and teachings of our mother foundress, St. Mary Euphrasia, to make a change for the betterment of the world. Mm -hmm.